Good morning, everyone. So this morning is another important day for all of us, especially us healthcare workers who care for our cancer patients. And we'll be talking about the basics of chemotherapy and not only chemotherapy, but anti-cancer agents, its interactions, and how they're prepared and their handling. And two of our very own, our oncology nurse and our oncology pharmacist, will be sharing with us their insights. So stay tuned. And in behalf of the Cebu Cancer Institute, Perpetual Soccer Hospital, and Mother Zeta Rivero, the CEO, I would like to welcome you all and hope you have fun. And thank you very much this early for listening. A pleasant morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second Cebu Cancer Institute webinar entitled Chemotherapy 101, Nursing and Pharmacology Approach. For this morning's lecture, we are blessed to have the two speakers to discuss about the basics of chemotherapy in a nursing and pharmacy perspective. To introduce our speakers, we would like to welcome our moderators for this morning's webinar. Our first moderator, she was a staff nurse of Cebu Cancer Institute for three years from December 2016 to March 2019. She's also a clinical oncology research infusion nurse who handles phase three clinical trial for cervical cancer. And she's the head nurse of the hematology and oncology unit of Perpetual Soccer Hospital Cebu Incorporated. Please help me welcome Miss Glory San Marie Roy. Thank you, Mr. Tristan. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today, who is going to talk about the overview of chemotherapy in a nursing perspective. This topic is very important for us to relearn and review the basics of oncology nursing. Our speaker has been affiliated in the institution for 19 years as an oncology nurse to being a clinical research coordinator who handled more than 30 oncology clinical trials and, and was also a former president of Philippine Oncology Nurses Association, Cebu chapter. He is fondly known or called as Sir Bon by many patients, as well as the staff in the oncology unit. Just like Batman who have Robin that helped save lives, the late Dr. Dennis Tutud also had Sir Bon as his sidekick. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Bernard Yonko. Good morning. I'm here to talk about the overview of chemotherapy, a nursing approach. Our objectives for today, first, to discuss the history of chemotherapy. Next, is to realize the importance of understanding the cell cycle in chemotherapy administration. Explain the goals of chemotherapy. Discuss the various nursing responsibilities during the various stages of chemotherapy administration. Utilize appropriate nursing interventions in the management of the most common side effects of chemotherapy. Apply patient safety principles in handling chemotherapeutic agents. We will discuss today the milestone in the history of cancer research and care. In the 15th century, the oldest known method of curing cancer is surgery. It was used by the Egyptians in the Middle Kingdom. In the 18th century, it is where the medicine and biomedical sciences were developed. During World War II, nitrogen mustard <coughs> was used as a chemical warfare, but it has a deleterious effect on the bone marrow of the exposed soldiers. So the U.S. Army controlled the use of this agent and performed further research and showed that it might benefit patients with hematologic malignancies. Their research became the model of the development of chemotherapeutic agents. 
In the 1960s to 1970s, chemotherapy is used with surgery and radiation as cancer treatment. And the purpose for this treatment is to palliate symptoms. With the advancement of the cytotoxic drugs, the goals of chemotherapy is not just to palliate symptoms, but also to control the spread of the disease and eventually cure the, the patient. There are also three categories of cancer treatment. First, we have the surgery. Usually, surgery is used for early stage cancers. Then we have the radiation therapy. Usually, this is given in conjunction with chemotherapy or concurrent with chemotherapy. Also, radiation therapy is used to palliate bone symptoms. Patients who have also bulky disease might benefit from radiation therapy if chemotherapy did not or is, is not effective in the treatment. Then we have the chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is the use of cytotoxic drugs. Also, the advancement of research, biological response to the fires are now available in the market, or we call it immunotherapies or monoclonal antibodies. Then we also have hormonal therapy. Usually hormonal therapy are used for prostate cancers and as adjuvant treatment for breast cancers. Now, what is chemotherapy? Chemotherapy is a treatment strategy based on the effectiveness of cytotoxic drugs, which act on characteristics of individual tumor cells and cell cycle kinetics. It is also a balance between destroying the cancer cells in order to cure or control the disease and sparing the normal cells or to lessen the unwanted side effects. So if the benefit outweighs the risk, then treatment will go on. Now, we will discuss about the cell cycle. So in a mammalian cell, it takes around 24 hours for a cell to divide. So first we have the G0 or the resting phase or the or cell arrest, then go into the G1 or growth one phase. Here in growth one phase, the synthesis of cellular components needed for DNA synthesis occur. It takes around 10 hours. Then to its phase or the replication of the DNA genome or the duplication of the DNA genome. Then to growth two phase or the G2 phase, where the synthesis of cellular components ready for mitosis. It takes around three to four hours. Then into the mitosis. Mitosis occurs around two hours. There are also drugs that targets the G1 phase, like the hormonal drugs or the tamoxifen. Then we also have the anti-neoplastic enzymes, like the lunase. Also the anti-tumor antibodies, like the doxorubicin and daptinomycin. These drugs target the G1 phase of the cell. Then we also have the anti-metabolites like the methotrexate, the gymcytabine, the 5 mu or the fluorouracil. We also have the pimetrixin. This acts on the S phase of the cell. Then the topo isomerase 1 inhibitors like the ironotican and the topotican. The anti-tumor antibiotics also, like the biomedicine, targets the G2 phase of the cell. Then, the vinca alkaloids, like the vincristine and the toxins, the paclitaxel and the docetaxel, these drugs act on the M phase of the cell. We also have the so-called cell cycle non-specific drugs, like the alkylating agents, the cyclophosphamide and the iphosphamide and the platinum agents like the cisplatin and the carboplatin. These drugs target any phases of the cell cycle. Now let's discuss the lung kill hypothesis. The vertical line connotes the cancer cells and the horizontal line for the time. Upon giving chemotherapy, there are three lung cell kill, then one lung cell regrowth. On the next cycle, another three lung cell kill then one cell regrowth. That's why chemotherapy is given in a 21-day cycle. Most common drugs or most common protocols 
require a 21 day interval of treatment. And what are the purpose of therapies? First, we have the adjuvant therapy. Adjuvant means additional treatment after the primary treatment to lower the risk that the cancer will recur. Next, we have the neoadjuvant treatment. This is a treatment as first step to shrink a tumor before the main treatment, or the main treatment would be surgery. Next, we have concurrent therapy. When two or more therapies are given together, such as chemotherapy and radiation, this is commonly used for cervical cancers and rectal cancers, where chemotherapy and radiation therapy are given together. Also, how long would I receive chemotherapy? In an adjuvant setting, treatment is up to four to six cycles. After the last cycle, the patient is observed for the next five years, usually an interval of three to six months for the next five years, then annually for the next 10 years. Then in the metastatic setting, treatment continues until maximum response or until the patient can afford to, for his treatment or until toxicity developed. Now, what the types of chemotherapy? First, we have the induction. Induction therapy uses high dose of drugs to induce complete response, as in lymphomas, uh, bulky disease lymphomas. We use induction treatment. Then, maintenance. So, maintenance is to delay the regrowth of residual cancer cells. Usually, the monoclonal antibodies are used for maintenance treatment. We also have chemotherapy drugs like the pemetrixib, where we can give it as a maintenance dose up to two years, one to two years of treatment. Then we also have palliative treatment or to control the symptoms. If the, the symptoms is being controlled, then we can stop the treatment until the symptoms recur. Now let's go to the nursing responsibilities in the preparation and administration of chemotherapy. Let's find out what are, our, what are our nursing responsibilities prior to chemotherapy. First, we must see to it that the consent to care must be signed prior to any procedures. Next, we must review the chemotherapy orders given by the attending physicians or the medical doctors of the patient for its completeness and legibility. Is it the, uh, the order is so clear? Then we also see to it that the dosing is correct based on the body surface area, as some drugs uses the body surface area in computing the dose. Most often, the monoclonal antibodies use the dosing based on the patient's weight. Then we must see to it that pre medications and emergency medications are available at hand. Some other uh, drugs or chemotherapeutic drugs need pre-medications prior to treatment, a day before, before, a day before treatment. So we must ask the patients if the patients have taken those pre-medications. Also, we must observe the sequencing of chemotherapy drugs to be administered. Usually, we give the MABs first before the chemotherapy or the monoclonal antibodies before chemotherapy. Then other special instructions like should the patients need admission, hospital admission after treatment, or the patient needs hydration or needs further observation. So these factors need to be observed before sending the patient out from the unit. Now, in computing the body surface area, we usually use the muscular's formula. So there are a lot of uh, formulas computing the body surface area, but the muscular's formula is the most common. Now, in computing the muscular's formula, the body surface area is equal to the square root of the height in centimeters multiplied by weight in kilograms divided by 3,600. For example, if your height is 170 centimeters and your weight is 65 kilograms, 
then your base A would be 175 meters square or 1.75 meters square. Now, if the dose would be 60 milligrams per meter square, then you have to multiply you multiply the 60 milligrams per meter square by 1.75 so that you can have your computing dose of the drug to 105 milligrams. Then, nursing responsibilities prior to chemotherapy would be we must obtain the recent results of laboratory exams like the CBC. Your absolute neutrophil count must be at least 1,500 cells per cubic mm and other necessary blood chemistries like if you give uh, cytotoxic drugs, you must compute first the creatinine clearance prior to giving that drug. Or if the drug or the chemotherapy drug is hepatotoxic, hepatotoxic then the liver enzymes must first be established before giving those drugs. Also, you must take the baseline vital signs, then assess for signs and symptoms of infection. Next, you must also assess for general well-being of the patient. Sometimes the blood results is good, but the patient's well-being or the performance status of the patient is so bad. So you must first relate it to the physician prior to giving the chemotherapy. Next responsibility is that you must assess the patient's level of knowledge and preparedness. Is the patient ready for uh, paying the cost of treatment? So that's one part of the uh, assessment or the responsibility of nurses so that you will not pay for the patient. Next, you have to check the pat patency of the IV line. Also, you must administer the pre-medications as prescribed. Then the common pre-medications for chemotherapy is that first we have the diphenhydramine or the antihistamine, this will be given for toxins. Then we have the zofran, an old anti-emetic drug. Then we have the metoclopramide, usually this is given as take-home medications. Then we have the most potent drug available now, currently available now, the palonocitron, the aloxy, but this is cost so much, around 6,000 pesos per vial. Then we have the omeprazole, the, the dexamethasone steroids together with the soliocortin. So these are the most common pre-medications for chemotherapy. Then, the nursing responsibilities during administration of drugs. We must wear the personal protective equipment. Then check chemo drug with your church nurse and clinical pharmacist and verify it against the doctor's order sheet or the chemotherapy sheet, order sheet. Next, you must identify if that is the correct patient using the 10 hours of medication administration. You must double check the patency of the IV line. Administer chemotherapy as ordered. Monitor for patient's response and any adverse reactions to chemotherapy. And lastly, assess IV site frequently. Then, you must also assess for any pain, discomfort, swelling on IV site. Report for any unusual symptoms like the nausea and vomiting, difficulty of breathing, or any un unusual reactions of the patient during the treatment. Then, <coughs> sorry, administer PRN medications as necessary. Monitor patients throughout the infusion until the infusion ends. Refer to the attending physician if the adverse event occurs. Then follow the required sequence for drug administration and institutional guidelines regarding physical administration. You must also flush the line in between each medication to avoid mixing of the drugs. And at regular intervals, check for blood returns. This is important to avoid extravasation. Next, in cases of desiccants, you must check for blood return following delivery of each 0.5 up to 2 cc of medication using the push 
full technique. If there is blood coming out, then that is a good sign of the line. Next, always ask the patient if there is burning or pain. Observe the sign for redness or swelling, as this is the first indication for extravasation. In cases of children, inconsolable crying can indicate severe pain at the site. You must observe the site for chemotherapy reactions during and after IV administration. This is very important. Then, our responsibilities after administration of chemotherapy are as follows. First, you must also wear your PPE. Flush the IV line. Discontinue IV line if no post hydration is needed. Dispose IV bottles and tubings in an anti neoplastic garbage bin or per your institution's policy. Then document the event. Now, I will let you see what are the common chemotherapeutic agents. First, we have the doxorubicin. This drug is used to treat leukemias, lymphomas, breast cancers, multiple cancers, etc. But this drug is also cardiotoxic, so we must uh, monitor the Todi echo at a regular intervals. Then, this drug is also physical, so the drug can also be given as bolus or IV drip over a period of 30 minutes to one hour. This drug also may cause reddish discoloration of urine for the next 24 to 48 hours after administration. If the reddish discoloration continues, then you must instruct the patient to call the APs or the attending physicians at hand or immediately. Then we have the oxalutatin or the brand eloxatin or oxalutatin vida. This drug is used to treat colon cancer. Then this drug can cause cold sensitivity. So you must avoid or the patient must be instructed to avoid cold beverages as this may cause, this may cause laryngospasm. <laughs> so if you have a cold heart, don't let the patient touch you. <laughs> Next, 5-FU or fluorouracil. Then, this is used to treat colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, breast cancer, head and neck cancers, and lots of many cancers. This is an old drug. Then, put, this drug can cause photosensitivity. So you must instruct the patient to avoid direct sunlight, to avoid uh, darkening of the skin, or you may see vein mapping from the peripheral line of infusion. You can see dark spots in the skin of the patient. Then, cisplatin, this is an old drug. This is used to treat lung cancers, cervical cancers, ovarian cancers, lymphomas, head and neck cancers, breast cancers, then this drug is also highly emetogenic. So upon giving this drug, part of the medications they use a most potent anti-emetic for this. This drug is also cytotoxic. So prehydration must be required or at least one liter of fluids must be given prior to giving this cisplatin. This drug is also light sensitive. So in giving this drug, it must, the drug must be covered with dark cloth. Then, this drug is also necrotoxic and autotoxic. So, this drug, before giving this drug, you must situate that the creatinine clearance must be more than 60 ml per minute. If the creatinine clearance of the patient is lower than 60, then you have to call the attending physician prior to giving this drug. This drug also can cause decreased potassium and magnesium and calcium. So in some institutions, the hydration may be added with potassium and magnesium sulfate to minimize the decrease in potassium and magnesium. Then we have the cyclophosphamide. Cyclophosphamide 
is used to treat breast cancers, lymphomas, breast cancers, or brain cancers, leukemias also. This drug can cause uh, frontal heat ache. So this drug must be given at least 15 minutes or more, or up to two hours. The, the shorter you give this drug, the more the patient can experience frontal heat ache. So if the patient might have frontal headache, you may alleviate its headache by putting cold packs on the frontal area. Also, this drug can cause darkening of the skin and nails. This drug also is cytotoxic, so part of the assessment would be to ask the patient if he, he has gross or microscopic hematuria. In elderly patients, we may use the cytoprotective agents like the uromethyxan you know, to avoid this uh, event, the hematuria. Next, cytarabine. Cytarabine is used to treat leukemias. The most common side effects of cytarabine is the so-called cytarabine eye, where puffy upper and lower eyelids and the treatment for this is steroid eye drops. We also have aeronautican or the Camto and Camto Sol. This is used to treat colon cancer. This drug is cholinergic drug, so before giving this drug, we must give anticholinergic drug like the atropine sulfate as part of the pre-medication. Now, let's go to the common side effects of chemotherapy and nursing management. First, the nausea and vomiting. This is the most common side effects of treatment of chemotherapy. So our nursing management must be, we must advise the patient to have small frequent meals, or we may give sour candies or ice chips, or give the patients PRN antiemetics. Usually, antiemetics are given as take-home medications. Then, next, edema on IV side. So first action is to transfer the IV side, then elevate affected extremity using one to two pillows. Neutropenia, this is the most serious adverse event that usually occurred in most of the patients. Usually patients receiving toxins. This is the most common uh, side effects. So this is the most serious hematologic toxicity is associated with the risk of life-threatening infections, as well as chemotherapy dose reductions and delays that may compromise treatment outcomes. So we may consider the use of myeloid growth factor or the colony growth factor or the field grass team. Next, we must assess for uh, difficulty of breathing or chest pain. So we let the patient to be calm Stop the infusion, provide oxygen inhalation at one to two liters per minute, elevate the head of the bed, then stay with the patient, and request another nurse to inform the attending physician, then request for ECG if indicated. Next, we have allergic reaction. So same, we must keep the patient calm, stop the infusion, and refer to the attending physician or give emergency medications as ordered. We usually give steroids, hydrocortisone, so that's the common steroid in giving for allergic reactions. Then we have the extravasation. So in, during ex extravasation, we, we need to aspirate the remaining chemo drug on the IV tubing coming from the patient. We must discontinue the IV line and transfer it to another site. Elevate the arm and apply cold compress. This is a picture of an extravasation. It causes gangrene in the tissues. Now, let's go to the proper nursing documentation. Nursing documentation must be clear, accurate, and accessible. It is a documentation that is essential for safe 
quality evidence-based nursing practice. It is also essential for good clinical communication as this documentation is a media within the healthcare team or with other professionals for credentialing, for legal actions, regulation and legislations, reimbursement, research, quality process and performance improvement. Now, in making corrections, we have the unacceptable, unacceptable method when we use or we wipe out or cross over or superimpose. The original data must not be obscured. Or sometimes if we make errors, so we copy the information on a new clean page. So that's not the correct. As clean doesn't mean perfect. Also, when we backdate our documentation, so current date must be used or must it must be dated currently. Like this. So the patient's name is being obscured. Then this is the correct type of making correction. So we must single line through the error, add the correct information, sign and date. Then for late entries, we may add notes or addendums, then sign the addendums in a current date. Like this, single strike through. The original data was not obscured. So as conclusion, with the start of the 21st century, oncology nursing is now geared up for the provision of holistic care strengthening of a collaborative multidisciplinary approach on care application of technologic innovations together with complementary therapy evidence-based practice and empowerment of clients as dr tutut said we doctors treat patients but you nurses alleviate their pain with your care thank you and have a good day Thank you for, for that wonderful and insightful lecture, Mr. Bernard. It will surely help oncology nurses to give care to cancer patients with knowledge and compassion. Moving forward, to introduce our next speaker, may I call on our second moderator. She was an oncology pharmacist for five years from January 2014 to August 2019. She's a clinical oncology pharmacist a clinical research coordinator who handles phase three clinical trial for bladder cancer. And she is the chief pharmacist and assistant manager of Perpetual Soccer Hospital Incorporated. Please help me welcome Ms. Tanya Cuevas Yu. Thank you. And allow me to redirect your attention to our second and last speaker for this morning's webinar. You see, all activities which require personnel to deal with chemotherapeutic agents actually lead them to a high risk of contamination and exposure to hazardous substances. But today, we are privileged to be educated and enlightened by a prestigious speaker who is well-versed in handling chemotherapy. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Olive Germain Caballo, our homegrown and yes, pioneer of the oncology pharmacy of Perpetual Soccer Hospital, Cebu Cancer Institute. Our speaker, Mr. Olive Germain Caballo, is one of Dr. Dennis Tudtud's protégés in the early days. He was with Dr. Tudtud in providing chemotherapy to cancer patients even before CCI was fully established. He worked beside other medical, the medical oncologists and with oncology nurse Bernard Yonko in setting up the processes and procedures in the chemo cancer unit. He has worked in the hospital for seven long and beautiful years as oncology pharmacist. After his experience in the hospital, he then trained, he was then again trained in Singapore General Hospital as a pharmacy technician handling total parenteral nutrition. He is trained in aseptic chemotherapeutic preparation and in the preparation and admixture of total parenteral nutrition. Once a medical Representative of the Oncology Division of Goodfellow Pharma Corporation, 
And now the district manager of nephrology division of the same company, Mr. Olive remains enthusiastic in paying forward what he has learned from the best oncologists of Cebu Cancer Institute. So sit back, relax, and be in your most comfortable position as we listen to him share his expertise in safe handling of chemotherapeutic patients. But before anything else, may I remind you to leave your questions in the Q&A chat box as we will answer to them shortly after the lecture. With that, help me welcome to the spotlight our speaker, Mr. Olive Germain Caballo. Good morning. My topic for today is about oncology pharmacy practice. For today's topic, I will discuss the oncology pharmacy definition and its role, facilities and equipment, the oncology pharmacy area, the common chemotherapy drug, and safe handling of that. According to the Board of Pharmaceutical Specialty, June 12, 1996, BPS recognized oncology pharmacy as a specialty, which addresses the provision of care to cancer patients, which promotes the optimal care of patients with virus malignant diseases and their complication, which he or she is closely involved in the recognition, management, and prevention of unique morbidities associated with cancer and cancer treatment. Recognition of the balance between improved survival and quality of life as a primary indicators and provision of safeguards against misadventures in a treatment area where novel and experimental drug therapies are frequently used. Practice scope. It creates a practice dedicated to the personal needs of the cancer patients and provide efficient, safe, and cost-effective terms of need. The Oncology Pharmacy Unit. The Oncology Pharmacy Unit comprises the Anti Room, Clean Room 1, and Clean Room 2, ACT area, and compounding area. This is the simple layout of a clean room, which separates the IV compounding area and the chemo preparation area with an adjacent uh, anti room area which downing area serve as an entry going both compounding areas. Anti-room. Anti-room provides access to clean room and provides facilities for downing. And also clean room design and control to minimize contamination and provides comfortable and well lighted environment. Pasma. Fastback serve as an entry and exit of all chemo preparation inside the clean room, and it has a UV light equipped for supply sterilization. Air doors. Air doors are situated adjacent to the clean room and clean room workstation, which control the entry of, of personnel and other uh, supplies in, in a controlled area. Clean room compounding area. This is the actual uh, laminar cabinet in the Cebu Cancer Institute, which we are using the biological safety cabinet, the vertical type 2 class 2, which uh, promotes uh, what is commonly used in the chemotherapy preparation. And for horizontal laminar cabinet, this is usually used for non chemo preparation. So HEPA filters, it filters the uh, vapors in the, during the preparation of the drugs and it is annually checked by the operators in, for leakings. So this is the, the uh, airflow scheme of the vertical cabinet which the, the air is flowing vertically passing to the under the wood which, which, which will be filtered away and it's in it's a recirculating air. There are two types of vertical, there are two types of laminar cabinet, the vertical and the horizontal cabinet. So for vertical cabinet, the beginning of the vertical cabinet is going up to down 
and for an horizontal cabinet is inside and going outside. So the cabinet is left open or on continuously, and all aseptic preparations are done six inches from the edge of the cabinet, and only necessary items are placed inside the cabinet for to minimize turbulence and annual checkup and validation of the cabinet is done very. So it was uh, the check is for air velocity, air flow patterns, HEPA filters, and air flow uh, integrity. The unit is built in a way that ensures protection of all personnel and the environment from exposure of ethylene drugs, as well as protecting the product from particulate and microbial contamination. Therefore, high level of impedance is always maintained. So going to the next topic, safe handling of cyclotoxic drugs. During the preparation, as an oncology pharmacy, since we are doing the IV preparation of the cyclotoxic drug, we must practice the aseptic technique. So what is aseptic technique? It's a skill and a technique which is designed to preclude contamination to ensure that the products are sterile, and clean, and also it protect the person that the equipment free from the microorganism. Before entering the clean room, what should we do? To remove all necessary items, the watches, the jewelries, the earrings, the necklace. Then we do the hand washing inside the ante room and we do the gout inside the under. So here is the basic hand washing techniques uh, recommended by World Health Organization. So personal protective equipment. There are four importance why we should wear, why we should follow the personal protective equipment. First, it is essential component for correct safety procedure and it also protects the personnel handling the cytotoxic drugs, protect the product from contamination, and protect the environment or the surrounding. Gowning. It is recommended to, to wear the recommended cover all gown inside the clean room because uh, clean room must have that limit the particles inside. So according to the risk analysis, each person brings around 100 trillion particles or people shed 100,000 particles per minute. So in this sense, uh, we, we need to control those particles inside the, inside the control clean room. So clean room gowns are made of a lint free paper which minimize those particles. So these are the sample. Uh, pictures use cover all gowns in the unit, and this is the video uh, showing you how to do the gowning. Uh, let me play. Uh, okay, okay. out and how to handle side effects. Here I'm illustrating a simple uh, simple uh, 
uh, illustration of a chemo man, which indicates the common um, toxicities and uh, the patient will encounter during the chemotherapy. For doxorubicin, doxorubicin usually the, the common toxicities for doxorubicin is alopecia and cardiotoxin. And for bleomycin, bleomycin usually for common toxicities is pulmonary fibrosis. And for carboplatin is alopecia, which is also an aggravating agent. For ventristin, CNS effect or uh, central nervous effects such as vinca uh, alkalides headache, and tamoxifen usually more on the eyes. Uh, effects of the tamoxifen is uh, watch out for the uh, eyes uh, side effects. And then cyclophosphamide. Cyclophosphamide commonly side effects in the kidney, so we have hemorrhagic cystitis. And then for cisplatin also, for the kidneys, so watch out for for the toxicity for cystatin and methotrexate, liver toxicity. Next slide. These are the commonly used toxicity in the unit. So old name is adrenaline. Lifetime cumulative dose is four hundred milligrams per meter squared. And it is highly vesicant, so it is usually give, given in a bottles or infusion of not more than one hour. And common indicator uh, laboratory for doctor visit patient uh, is uh, to the echo because doctor visit means cardiotoxin. So the other anti tumor antibiotic or anti tumor chemotherapy is the epirubicin, which is less cardiotoxic compared to doctor visit which is advisable for a very or a patient with history of cardiac problems. So the lifetime coverage dose of hyperacid is 10 milligrams per meter squared. Taxane. This is a uh, highly irritant and causes rust. So paclitaxel is usually indicated for ovarian and lancet and breast AA. And a pre-medication of dexamethasone 4, 4 milligrams Five tablets, 12 hours, and six hours prior to, prior to chemotherapy is given. While docetaxel is intended for breast cancer in, in mono or combined therapy, and at dexamethasone, 4 mg BID, two tablets, a day before, during, and half, and a day after chemo is given as a pre medication. Platinum drugs, the first generation. Platinum drugs is cisplatin, which is very light sensitive. So, all IV infusion of cisplatin are covered the IV bag and the IV, IV line. So, it is nephrotoxic. So, patients who are, are hydrated prior to chemo and, is, and it's highly inetogen. So, patients are given a long acting anti emetics that is applicated to palosophone. The second generation carboplatin is a light sensitive also and it's combined with ovarian and lung and bladder cancer and it's less nephrotoxic. The third generation is the oxalic platin. It is non-nephrotoxic and non-light sensitive. It is commonly used in col colorectal CA and common to watch out is for the cold sensitive. So patients are advised not to drink cold drinks and not to uh, hold or touch sharp objects because the neurosensory will be affected. Five FU or the five chlorodulacin. It is indicated for colorectal cancer and it is photosensitive when it is administered in, inside the body. So in the common Toxicity for five acute is the, uh, the skin will be darkened and the veins will be darkened. And the uh, tablet form of 5 FU in the Cape Cetabine 
which is the program of fiber group, which is the elevator in Zenoda. And the commonly common protocol is used is the Xanox or colon cancer colorectal. And the other colorectal medication is the erotica, which is very uh, toxic medication because it causes diarrhea. So patient uh, taking this erotica medication should be given uh, atropine as an uh, atropine uh, for to, to prevent um, the cause of diarrhea. Pemetoxin, it is indicated for lung CA and usually patients are pre-medicated with folic acid, vitamin B12 as an IM injection and an dexamethasone. Immunotherapy drugs. These are the targeted treatment. So these are the monoclonal antibodies, like the trastuzumab, innovator, and oxyptin. Is it indicated for patients with HER2 positive receptor and is indicated with breast and gastric CA? It is given IV or sub Q every 21 days. Detoximab, innovator, Mabjara for CD20 positive, it is indicated for non Hodgkin lymphoma. Brento Simon. Innovator is Adsipris. It is indicated for a CD30 positive and it is given to Hodgkin lymphoma. So I'm going for the preparation aspect of, this, of the chemotherapy. So in preparing the chemotherapy drugs, we use these devices, the closed system transfer devices. So they are called the fossil. So the BD fossil protector is permanently attached to the barrier and it's used in the preparation drug. So this one is, uh, it, it neutralizes the pressure from the vial in the surgery, which uh, enables the, the pharmacy to control the medication easier. And minimize the exposure of the vapors. And the BD fossil injector ensures a close transfer of the drug by means of double tightly sealed elastomeric membrane. So this is attached to the syringe. And then the close administration of drugs can be performed safely and conveniently with BD fossil. So this one is attached to the IV mount or proper and close uh, transfer of blood to the IV bag. So the last topic I will be discussing is the managing experience. So treatment of cytotoxic spill. Spill kits are assembled or purchased and made readily accessible in areas where cytotoxic drugs are prepared or stored. So personals are trained in the prior to use of these So these are the list and content of a speed kit, the gloves, the gown, the safety towel, the respiratory mask, the towels, the chemo waste bag, pair of shoes, the signage, the absorbent pads, the scoop, and the scraper in a tire. So emergency alert in gowning. So during the spills, uh, there's a display warning alerting the personnel that there's a spill and also uh, put on an respiratory mask, safety goggles, and rubber gloves in order to, to protect yourself while, while doing the spills. So how to manage the spills? For powder spills, wet the disposable bus pads with water or alcohol or uh, soap and water based and carefully absorb powders onto wet towels. So for, for powder spills, uh, it is a uh, wet toweling aspect and for liquid spills, absorb and contain spill with disposable gauze pads and for larger spills, may, may require more absorbent toweling. So this is more on the dry toweling aspect. So for cleanup and decontamination, all materials used 
including the blocks, are placed into a red, thick polyethylene waste bag, and this bag is filled and labeled as cytotoxic waste. For the institution, waste disposal are colored red, and all and, and it is uh, gathered daily in the holding area for disposal and collected by a third party vendor, a pollution abatement solution services, which handle all the hazardous. Uh, waste in the hospital and the institution. And all sharp objects and waste will be placed in the function of the hospital. So, that is my last line and hope you enjoy my topic, learn something, and feel free to watch the short video for this group answer. Thank you for the comprehensive lectures, Mr. Bernard and Mr. Olive. To facilitate the question and answer portion, we will turn you over to our moderators, Ms. Glory and Ms. Tanya, for the open forum discussion.
Thank you very much for that beautiful lecture, Mr. Bernard Bianco and Mr. Olive Caballo. Now is the time for your questions to be addressed. Thank you very much for leaving questions in our chat box. And let's see our first question. What, Glory? Uh, the first question is addressed for Sir Bon. The question is, how essential is chemotherapy drug administration sequencing? Well, thank you for that question. Chemotherapy drug sequencing is essential because for three reasons. One is to optimize the effect of the drug. Secondly, to minimize or to lessen the toxicity from uh, inflammation because physical drugs should be given first as this can cause irritation than the non physical drugs. Because the longer you uh, have the IV line in the patient's body, the more it can cause inflammation. So that's why physical drugs should be given first to lessen the toxicity. That's all, thank you. Thank you very much, Sir Bernard. Our next question is from an anonymous attendee and is, I think this is to be addressed to our pharmacist, Mr. Olive Caballo. Mr. Olive, anonymous attendee asks, can we prepare or compound chemotherapy drugs ahead of time? Uh, good morning, Ma'am Tanya. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, yes, we can prepare chemotherapy drugs ahead of time, but due to financial constraint and other factors, since uh, uh, though we the, the medicines have, have, have stability records, but as per guidelines instituted by the institution, uh, we can we can prepare the medi medicine on the spot or freshly prepared because uh, it depends on the individual institution. So uh, for some institution, they will prepare the items uh, ahead of time. For example, uh, I encounter some institution uh, in, in one year, they have around 30,000 preparations, chemo preparation. So in that aspect, they can prepare ahead of time to schedule all the preparation. But in our institution, for, for example, for Cebu Cancer Institute, uh, we decided in, in put into policy that all chemo preparation shall be prepared at, uh, on the day of the schedule of the patient. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Alev. I, I hope that answers your question, Ms. Anonymous Attendee. What do we have next, Ms. Glory San? Okay, the next question is addressed for Sir Bon again. Uh, I'll be raising two questions for you, Sir Bon. First is, are oncology nurses in the hospital dedicated staff? Second is for the concurrent therapy. Which one should go first, the radiation therapy or the chemotherapy? Sir Bon? The staff of the chemo unit are only dedicated in the uh, uh, oncology unit. Uh, but they cannot rotate to any other areas in the hospital. In case of uh, treatment in the room, then the nurse, the onco nurse, will go in the unit in the department of the oncology dedicated for oncology patients and give, give the treatment there in the patient's room if there's no need to um, send the patient in the unit. Also for concurrent treatment with chemo RT, chemotherapy is given first as the treatment takes longer than RT. That's why the treatment or the chemo must be given prior to RT. That's all, thank you. Thank you for that, Sir Bon. Um, I'm Tanya, do you still have questions for Sir Olive. 
Thank you, Sir Olive. We have another question, again, from an anonymous attendee. And it says, what do you use to clean your biosafety cabinet? Okay, good morning. Uh, how to clean the bio cabinet and what are we using? We are using uh, isopropyl alcohol, 70%. Thank you, Sir Olive. Yeah, welcome. Okay, there's still questions for you, Sir Bon. Question is for multiple chemotherapy chemotherapy drug administration. Which drug should be administered first? Is it the vesicant or the irritant? Now, for that case. Visican is more dangerous than irritant, so Visican should be given first as this may cause tissue inflammation or tissue damage, while irritant just causes local inflammation or local damage. So Visican should be given prior to irritant drugs. Thank you. Thank you for that, Sir Bond. Sir Olive, I, we have another question from Neonita Obnial. Yes. And it says, in the absence of a laminar, what can be an alternative equipment? What are the risks without this equipment? Thank you for that question. That's very really interesting. Okay. In the absence of a laminar cabinet, the usual practice is still you, you need to wear the gloves, the mask, the goggles, and a simple PPE to to manage those uh, exposure risks of the pharmacies. That's all. Thank you, Sir Olive. But I think the biological safety cabinet is really a very important uh, equipment in yes. when you establish a cancer unit, right? Yes, yes, sometimes. So that's why when when uh, the CCI or the Cebu Cancer Institute was already um, uh, established, we highly recommend preparing chemotherapy drugs only in the oncology pharmacy unit. And it applies the multi multidisciplinary approach with uh, the oncology pharmacist is, uh, is the one handling the preparation. The oncology nurse are handling the, uh, the, uh, the chemo administration of the drug and with the, uh, with the, with the co-management with the doctors for the patient counseling. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Olive. Another is, I think, still addressed to you. Isn't the stability of the drug be compromised if it is prepared ahead of time? Uh, okay. Uh, the, sub the stability of the drugs will not be compromised because uh, we have, uh, we, we prepare it in a standard uh, strength and concentration. So, but, but since uh, the institution is uh, agreed that we will prepare the drug in a, in a, in a daily basis, during the chemo of the patient. So uh, I don't think there's a problem with the stability. Okay. Thank you, Sir Olive. I think a lot of questions are for you. Can I have one last question for okay. you, Sir Olive? It says here, okay. can you use another brand if you're allergic to a certain chemo drug or you certainly can't use the same drug next time? I think the, uh, the is asking about uh, interactions or or allergic reactions or the use of rechallenging maybe. Can you address this question, please, Sir Olive? Okay, uh, one good example is uh, the patient is, uh, uh, there's an uh, allergy of, of, of toxin. So that's why, because uh, toxins are known to be allergic, can cause aller uh, allergic reaction to a patient. That's why every first chemo of the patient, uh, we, will, uh, will under, we will have a test dose in order to to detect if the patient will will, let, will have that kind of, kind of scenario. So if ever, in, in, for instance, there's a allergic reaction, so we will, uh, since the doctor is, the medical oncologist is, is present during that, that chemotherapy, so uh, the doctor will do have clinical management also in that. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Olive. Now I think that turn the spotlight on to Sir Bernard Yonko. Any questions for our oncology nurse, Lori Tan? Yes, thank you, Ma'am Tanya. Um, there's another question for you, Sir Bon. Can weekly chemotherapy for concurrent 
therapy be given on the last day of the week, like Friday? Uh, thank you for that question. We can give the chemotherapy anytime as long as it is not uh, for in a sequence like Mondays to Fridays or for five days duration. So better if the duration of treatment is five days, then better start the treatment on Mondays. If the treatment just take one day, then we can give treatment any time of, uh, of the week, either Saturday or any, any time. That's all. Thank you for that. Thank you for that answer, Sir Bon. Um, the, there's a question where, uh, is there any changes in the protocols in the Cebu Cancer Institute since the lockdown? So uh, on behalf of all uh, the unit and, or the staff in the Cebu Cancer Institute, I'll be able to answer this. Since the lockdown last March, we were able to practice social distancing within the unit um, one lazy boy apart from each patient and our nurses and oncology pharmacists are practicing wearing the uh, PPEs with uh, face shields and face masks on and we're also able to follow the hospital protocol in which they are going to undergo um, thorough assessment, the COVID-19 assessment where we also have our own assessment desk prior to having uh, their chemotherapy. And also we are following the golden um, standard, which we have the RT-PCR before any procedure, which we have the chemotherapy, the radiation, or the brachytherapy. I hope this answers your question. Um, there's a last question for Sir Bon. I guess it's the, from an anonymous attendee. Some doctors consider doxorubicin as a light-sensitive chemo drug. Is it light-sensitive, Sir Bon? What's the question again, please? The question, Sir Bon, uh, states that uh, some doctors consider doxorubicin as a light-sensitive drug. Um, the question is, is it light sensitive? Now, doxorubicin is not light sensitive, but it is uh, cardiotoxic. So doxorubicin can be given without any, do you call this, uh, any covering, but doxorubicin should be given uh, in the current study or latest study show that the longer you infuse doxorubicin, the lesser the cardiotoxicity. So, that's it. so it is not light sensitive, but it can cause uh, photosensitivity to the patients. It can cause darkening of the nails and, and skin. Yeah, but it's not light sensitive. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Juan, for that answer. I guess there's a question for Mr. Olive Montaña. Thank you. I like how the attendees are so engaged to our topic today, and I see a lot of questions going in. So another question for our pharmacist from Ms. Gilay Puerra. Aside from preparing the chemo drugs, what is the role of oncology pharmacists in handling the side effects of chemotherapy drugs in patients in terms of physical effects of the drugs in the body and as well as emotional aspects of undergoing chemotherapy? That was a long question for you, Sir Olive. Okay, uh, that was very interesting. Okay, uh, uh, as we all know, during the consultation of the patient in the clinic, the patient cannot really absorb all the, the uh, consultation of the doctors, the dose and ones during the chemo because the patient is so anxious. So that's the role of the pharmacist or the oncology pharmacist during the chemo period of the patient. So while the patients were going on chemo, we as an oncology pharmacist, we are there to do the counseling, to tell them what to expect, what, uh, what to do, and, and what are to avoid. Okay, that's all. Thank you, Sir Olive. Let's see. 
What other questions do we have here? We have from RK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. Sir so Roland Carl Castaños from St. Paul to Bigarao is asking, we are using an ESCO isolator for chemo prep. Do you recommend to have a clean room? Okay. Uh, using a uh, ESCO isolator, since this, because there are so many types of vertical cabinets, then, then since you're using a ESCO isolator, the closed type, so compounding unit, even if you're still using an isolator or uh, ESCO isolator cabinet, still you need the clean room because uh, we don't really know the exposure, the, the exposure of the vapors during, during the preparation. Because what if the isolator will, will, will malfunctions, the, the annual leakage of the, of the HEPA filters will, will malfunction. So that's the, the problem there. But even if, they, even if we don't have that, uh, we, you don't have that kind of clean room, just a, a clean room isolated in a in an area, uh, not in a in a thorough traffic uh, room. So you must also designate a room for that. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else for our oncology nurse, Miss Larry Tan? Thank you, Ma'am Tanya. Um, Sir Bon, there is a question from an anonymous attendee. When preparing the consent form, do you discuss thoroughly to the patient on what to expect during course of therapy? Initially, uh, toxicities of the chemotherapy is discussed by, with the, by the doctor to the patient at their clinic visit. And in the unit, we just reinforce the toxicities, whether the patient has been discussed with this or not. If the patient was not discussed, then we give a counseling. Usually, the nurses will give the counseling prior to treatment or prior to the giving the drug. So in giving the chemotherapy, we must inform the patient of the possible toxicities, even the financial aspect, which we will discuss that with the patient so that they are prepared. That's why the informed consent should, uh, we should see to it as nurses, as one, one responsibility of the nurse is to see to it that the patient is well informed about the, about the treatment and, and their toxicities, as well as the cause of treatment. And during uh, the duration of their treatment also, and also the, um, the, well, the follow-ups after treatment. So it is discussed during the consent signing. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Bon. In addition to that question also, um, when the patient arrives in the unit, we give out um, a informed consent to be signed by them. In partnership, in partner with that, we sit down with them, sat by their side, and explain to them the total process from when they come in, how they'll uh, what are they going to present to the uh, assessment, and then up to when they come inside, um, have their vital signs checked, and also be um, oriented by the whole oncology unit. Where, they, where, where will they see um, a comfort room, or how will they approach a nurse, or how are they going to process their bill? So it's a total um, package that we give to them prior to giving out the chemotherapy drug. And we're also going to explain to them the possible um, side effects of each of the drugs so that uh, when they go home, they're able to um, expect or know what they're going to manage or do at in their own home. Okay, uh, we'll look on to other questions. Um, Sir Bon. There's another question from an anonymous. What's the immediate intervention when nurses or pharmacists get filled with these vesicants or irritants? Yeah. In the unit, we have a spill kit. Then if there is such incident, then we have a specialized uh, nurses to do, to do the cleaning of that area but 
as the nurses wear PPE, that's, that's why they are not so uh, exposed to that. So I think it's just a, um, what do you call this? Uh, to minimize that, to minimize that effect or to, mini to minimize that incident, we should be careful. Oh, the patient instructed to be careful with, uh, with uh, their treatment. Yeah, and now we are using uh, plastic bottles. That's why minimal, uh, minimal incident of spilling the the drugs in the unit. Thank you, Sir Bon. Um, I see a question from Don Don Tueres. Sir Don, your question is: Do you have any tips to help patients and their caregivers better communicate with nurses? So. Uh, communication with uh, a nurse and a patient is um, quite a challenge Challenge for uh, we are dealing with different types of personalities, but it is the nurse's task or responsibility to reach out to each patient and firstly is to establish rapport. So this is where a deep um, relationship with nurse and patient enters while having their chemotherapy. It is important so that uh, the patients will also be, uh, they'll feel welcome or the, the nurses might or relieve their fear while having their chemotherapy sessions. And also um, at the end of the day, nurses and patients have a, a relationship or deep relationship. May, may it be while ongoing treatment or after the treatment. Uh, Ma'am Tanya, do you have questions for Sir Olive? I see a question from Ms. Sorry, this is... Sorry, just to read the answer of Dr. Ellie Maydoliaga from the Ministry for She's asking, how is health financing of patients treated in private versus government? So the, to read the answer of Dr. Eddie May, in the private setting, example, PSH CCI, we assist our patients in applying for financial assistance in agencies like BCSO, DSWD, and for children with cancer, we have the Kite Foundation, which is also situated at CCI PSH. We assist them in networking with several agencies. And then another, can I, how many minutes do we have left? Can we try? One more question for, for Sir Olive. The question is from, let me see. We have one question that says, is it detrimental to a pharmacist's health if we are exposed to chemo drugs for how many years? Um, can you enlighten us on this, Mr. Olive? Okay, uh, for, <clears throat> for my experience, uh, uh, as long as you practice the safe handling of cytotoxic drugs from the from the preparing from dispensing i guess uh, uh there will be there, there will be no problem about uh, exposure uh so that's all on tanya thank you one more question from for the nursing perspective what we have here miss glory san thank you ma'am tanya uh, there's a question from an anonymous attendee. In your institution, how will you protect the health provider during this pandemic? So, as I said a while ago, we're practicing the safety protocols following um, where we have the basis from the DOH and also um, using or adapting the protocol of our hospital. Uh, we have, uh, we're practicing the RT-PCR for each patient and we are using PPEs um, every day when we handle each patient from the chemotherapy down to the radiation, down to the breath. So uh, we also practice um, regular RT-PCR swabbing of each uh, staff and employees in the unit. We'll have last one question for you, Sir Bon. Do we have a universal protocol for IV cannula to use for chemotherapy? The question is, do we have universal IV cannula? Now, I guess no. the question, Sir Bot, is do we have a specific cannula used 
in the unit. Ah, specific cannula use. Okay. Now in the unit, we just uh, we just use what is provided by us by from the pharmacy department. So we don't use any uh, out from outside uh, of the institution. We just use from the pharmacy unit. Or if the patient will have their uh, uh, cannula from outside, then we can use it, but we usually use the cannula from the pharmacy assistant. This can be reimbursable from uh, by PhilHealth. So, thank you. I think plan to add, I think they choose the cannula that is appropriate for the chemotherapeutic drugs that they are about to give. So I think they would choose, for example, a bigger gauge for highly vesicate drugs, and then we choose a gauge I think it's more of gauge appropriateness. Um, to answer that question, um, we use gauge 22. That's the biggest uh, gauge that we have for our cancer patients. When we use a protocol uh, which have highly vesicant drugs like the FAT, FEC, or the Vinarelbin, um, we have 24 gauge cannula. That's for irregular infusions. Uh, with chemotherapy drugs. Uh, Montanya, do you have any more questions or is it okay? Thank you so much for your questions, our dear attendees. Uh, we are very happy that you are engaged with our topic and we are also thankful that you have attended our webinar today. As much as we want to prolong the seminar, but due to time constraints, I think we'll have to end the question and answer portion uh, at this moment. So what do we have next, Mr. Tristan? For the closing remarks, may we all welcome Mr. Dr. Arnold Uson. Okay, thank you very much now uh, for the speakers, Olive and uh, Bernard, and of course, the, our moderator, uh, Tanya and Lori. It is very engaging uh, uh, session for all the nurses. So I was surprised I also go to the <laughs> closing remarks. But nevertheless, we had a very good uh, conference for the nurses. It's very engaging and I'm so proud of my nurses and also our pharmacists. It makes us proud that they were able to engage all the nurses in this conference. I hope it's already an informative uh, lecture and uh, um, discussion with all of you. And I hope we hope that we have a good uh, day ahead of us. Okay. Um, we also like to thank our sponsors, sponsor Goodfellow Pharma and all the sponsors of the past webinars. We, uh, we thank you for your support and hope that you have a good day ahead of you. Thank you. Once again, thank you for participating in this morning's webinar. We had a very productive session. Keep posted for any updates through our Facebook page, PSH Cebu Cancer Institute. Thank you once again and stay safe, everybody.